Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! One of, one of the gravest problems, I think, of, of the time that we spend together is that I don't think you care anything like as much about journalism as we do. I, I'd say this was true of most of my colleagues here at LBC, the ones who are actual journalists. We, we're fascinated by issues of journalism, especially Nick and I, because we're both old newspaper ways, well, much older than me, but we're both sons of, we're newspaper men who are sons of newspaper men. So although we don't have a great deal in common politically, the, 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 the state of the industry is enduringly fascinating to us. But I, I'm hoping that the journalistic issues surrounding the publication of this dossier alleging that Donald Trump has been up to all sorts of things with, uh, with Russian prostitutes. I'm hoping it's as interesting to you as it is to me, because it is the journalistic element that I want to discuss or I want you to discuss with me now. Um, and it's a simple question. Actually, it's not a simple question at all, but, but I'll try and make it sound simple in the first instance, of whether or not the website BuzzFeed, which is very much at the forefront of new media, was right to publish in its entirety a dossier that had been assembled by a former MI6 man and given to the FBI. As the details emerge. It sounds less and less flaky, this uh, genesis of the story, but it doesn't necessarily exonerate BuzzFeed for breaking one of the golden rules of journalism. So it's an ex-MI6 man who's now gone into hiding from his home in Surrey. And if you're laughing at that and thinking it's all a bit John le Carré, two things. John le Carré was a spy. His, his books are based on reality. And two, the Russians kill people in this country. They kill, kill people without buy your leave. Russia is a country whose parliament is currently in the process of eff essentially decriminalizing wife beating. This is what happens. I've told you. This is the authoritarian white supremacist uh, bear marching backwards out of the 21st century. They're currently trying to downgrade the crime of battering your wife at home. Because, you know, that's a man's right. It shouldn't really be the business of the authorities. That's a domestic, a domestic right. And again, don't forget, plenty of people in this country, fully paid up members of the Vladimir Putin fan club with their grubby little badges and quite possibly with a check in their back pocket if they're in the political world rather than the journalistic one. So that's where you are. You've got a British ex-spy, ex-MI6, no one's disputing that, no one's arguing with that. Uh, all of the clever money suggests he's the real deal, he's very good at what he does. He was brought in to, actually this probably isn't the best example of something to pluck from his CV, but to give you the idea of the level of access that he enjoys, he was brought in on a commercial basis during the bid for the World Cup, the England bid for the World Cup, and asked to uh, try to look for dirt on, on some of the rival bids, including the Russians, who of course went on to Walt's home while the Brits got absolutely humiliated. But he, he, he is regarded by former colleagues and by diplomats and, and other experts as being very, very much the real deal. And this dossier had been doing the rounds for a while. There was a, a former British ambassador to Moscow who was interviewed elsewhere this morning, who was describing an encounter he had with Senator John McCain in, in, in October or November of last year, at which the awareness of this dossier was brought to the attention of uh, of them, but well, they, they were both aware of this dossier. John McCain then took pains to get hold of it and passed it on to the FBI. So it exists, 15 pages long. It contains a, a, a veritable uh, a potpourri of of accusation and allegation. But 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 it wasn't confirmed. It wasn't verified. And that means it's possibly not true. So, should BuzzFeed have published it? And the only reason I'm even asking that question, if you'd asked me this three or four years ago, I, I wouldn't have thought it was even a debate. In fact, I don't even think BuzzFeed would have contemplated pu pu publishing. I don't even know if they existed three or four years ago. It gives you an idea of how fast the game is changing. But I would never have dreamed of asking you this question five years ago, and I can't really imagine circumstances in which I would have done. Is a reputable media organization right to publish a completely unverified series of allegations against an incredibly senior public figure? Completely unverified. Then maybe you'd have said to me, well, who wrote it, James? And I'd have said, well, that, that, that bit of it is kosher. And, and how has it come into the public eye? Well, via a former American presidential candidate, via Senator John McCain. 
So it's got a pretty kosher pedigree. So, yeah, maybe we should have been able to have a look at it. I said, but no, you can't. As a reputable media organization, you can't go around printing stuff that's unverified or unproven. But we live in a world now where the next president of America almost certainly wouldn't have been elected were it not for the support he enjoyed from disreputable media organizations that print undiluted lies. And you know how the last hour, even though ostensibly it was about injecting your wife at home, if you pardon um, the turn of phrase, it actually ended up being quite philosophical. I, this, I want this to be the same. I don't today want this to be a... I, I, you know nothing, James. Donald Trump is the messiah versus... Well, actually, he's not. He's a, he's a self-confessed sex offender with, with, with a, uh, a clearly a disgrace, some massive secret in his own financial records, which is the only reason why he won't publish them. So we won't do that. The philosophical argument is this. When, when do you come down to your enemy's level? So you, you, you have to remember that Donald Trump's rise to prominence was actually masterminded in many ways by the bloke who, who runs that website called Breitbart, which publishes, I mean, it, it would be funny if it wasn't so serious, absolutely undiluted hogwash. There may well be some stuff on there that's true as well. I'm not suggesting everything they publish is, is hogwash, but I think they're the outfit that responded on New Year's Eve to the fact that a firework had ignited some safety netting on a, on a church in Germany by claiming that seven million Muslim men had marched in there e- eating children while screaming Allahu Akbar at the altar. That, that's the kind of stuff they publish. Um, the guy who set that place up is Donald Trump's chief of staff. So if you see them as being on one side of this argument, you have uh, uh, essentially a white supremacist liar running a media outlet. And then you've got the other fella, the Alex Jones fella, who runs Infowars, and they routinely print articles or run pieces about uh, John Podesta, Hillary Clinton's key advisor, being involved in the abduction of, of Madeleine McCann. Now, WikiLeaks also published some true stuff, but again, if you see it reported in a reputable media organization, you'll see that a CNN contributor uh, gave a heads up to Podesta on two occasions of questions that might pop up or questioners that might pop up during CNN's uh, so-called town hall debates. Uh, utterly reprehensible behavior on the part of that contributor, which is why CNN sacked her as soon as they found out. But if you read it through the lens of these websites like Breitbart and Infowars, it becomes proof of corruption on an epic level and evidence that CNN is in bed with Hillary Clinton or, 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 or others. Actually, all it's evidence of is that one of their contributors allowed their enthusiasm for a Clinton victory to blind them to basic decency. But there's no basic decency on the other side. And this is what I find personally and professionally so absolutely fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Because there's a line I wrote about Brexit just before Christmas, about the Remain side turned up to a knife fight in a pair of battered boxing gloves with a borrowed copy of the Queensbury Rules. Any account you read, and the best is Tim Shipman's All Out War, any account you read of, of, of the referendum campaigns, is uh, it's impossible to escape that conclusion. I mean, whichever side of the fight you're on, the, the, the people on the Leave side fought in a way that the Remain side didn't even recognise. It was win at all costs. It was nuclear. It was vicious and violent and absolutely uh, all or nothing. The Remain side were still having arguments about what sandwiches to order in, while the, while the Leave side were sticking knives in each other's backs. And, and that is one of the reasons why Remain lost. Not the only reason, but one of the reasons why Remain lost. So... I'm not going to apologize for using the words reputable and disreputable because that is simply a matter of fact, not opinion. And I I know that other people will think it is an opinion, but it's not. If you knowingly print lies, often designed to whip up race hatred and subsequently boast about it, you are disreputable media. You might be popular or populist, um, but you are disreputable. BuzzFeed is not. BuzzFeed might make mistakes and it might do things wrong, but it would not deliberately publish lies in order to whip up hatred that would add to the political fortunes of a candidate they approved of, not actual lies. So even if they printed a dossier that contains things that aren't true, they are printing a dossier which they are describing as unproven. You go over to the right-wing websites and it would be delivered to you as a top-secret, absolutely incontrovertibly true piece of evidence that demonstrates the satanic roots of Hillary Clinton's entire family. 
I can't remember whether it was Infowars or Breitbart that ran the piece about her being an actual spell casting witch. You can't put media like that on the same page as media like this. Um, for most of the day on LBC, or media like the BBC, or media like uh, the, the, the Daily Telegraph, or even the Daily Mail, which, you know, upsets me on a daily basis, but deliberate, they might manipulate and spin and put an editorial slant on stuff, but they're not going to print... I, I, I was even going to add the sun to this list, but they've still got Kelvin McKenzie on the payroll, and that story yesterday about Hillsborough followed on in the news bulletins on the death of Graham Taylor, and I thought his grubby little fingerprints are over both of those stories. Graham Taylor describing feeling under physical threat sometimes because of the atmosphere of hatred that Kelvin McKenzie whipped up against him, and also describing his mother's tears at the, at the hatred that had been unleashed upon her son, and then finally the prospect of criminal prosecutions following upon the Hillsborough cover-up, and that man still has a column in the sun. So, all right, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to go all in on reputable media being established media, not while men like that still draw a salary. But y y you take my point. It's a deliberately print lies. So BuzzFeed took a decision to print this dossier while telling its readers, as reputable media would do, that it was unproven. Unproven. And they gave background on it as well, to where the dossier has come from, who has put it together, where, where it has emerged from, not leaving any of that out. So you can make your own conclusion. You could, if you wanted, even conclude that, oh, well, look, it's been done by Trump's opponents. It must all be nonsense. Russian and British espionage experts suspect that a lot of what's in the dossier is true. But espionage experts don't have to prove it before publishing it. They just pass it on to their superiors, and their superiors make decisions accordingly. My question for you today is actually whether or not, quote, reputable media has to come down to the level of disreputable media, or whether that is actually what people like Vladimir Putin want, and it would just be an, a whole new chapter of epic, epic chaos. Epic chaos. 0345 is the number you need. So these, these sites like Breitbart and Infowars print absolute nonsense, but it works. It persuades people that, that you know, all Muslims are, are rapists and terrorists and all, all black people are, are deserving of, of contempt and, and criticism and, and all lefties are secretly planning to homosexualize the youth of America and Europe and all, all, all lib I don't like that word, I shouldn't say it out loud because it offends the disabled. All snowflakes are part of some massive conspiracy to, to wipe out the white race and, and, and even as I say it I'm giggling inside but... Go and read it, it's true. People use the phrase white genocide on sites like this with a straight face. They're trying to wipe out white people. Hey, listen, if you've got a real fear of white people being wiped out, don't have any babies with someone who's not white. It's really that simple. It's just like gay marriage. Got a big problem with gay marriage? Don't marry a gay. No problem. Got a big problem with, with, with mixed race? Well, carry on being racist. Don't mix with people of different races from you. But it's this media push to make everybody believe they're under siege. So what does reputable media do? BuzzFeed published something that is unproven. Part of the defence will be, look what the other side are doing. Does that defence work for you? Okay? Hit the numbers now, you will get through. 0345 6060 973 is the number you need. Because I, I tell you straight and briefly, part of me, part of me says, yeah, crikey, how else? You've got to fight fire with fire, even if the fire is fraudulent. But a bigger part of me says, no. When they go low, we go high. And then another part of me says, yeah, how did that work out for Michelle and Barack Obama? It's 11.16. So I, I'm pretty sure BuzzFeed shouldn't have published this dossier, and yet given the amount of absolute hogwash that has been put, well, that has effectively propelled Donald Trump to the White House, stories about Hillary Clinton being a witch, I'm asking you whether or not actually the good guys, the Empire, <laughs> have, have got all the best tunes and it's time that the Rebel Alliance actually started building their own Death Star. Chris is in Northwich. Chris, what do you reckon? Hi, James. Thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. A couple of things here. Um, I find myself in the unusual position of having to defend Donald Trump, which I never <laughs> thought I would ever do. These are unusual times, Chris. Unusual times. I, know. I would be delighted if the contents of that dossier were true. But my, my only 
the impression of this is that that dossier you know, that work was was first of all solicited by a Republican Party rival to Donald Trump. And it was then passed over to the Democratic Party. So the whole origins of the documents or the research were by people seeking to discredit Donald Trump. Now, this guy who wrote it, Chris Steele, he's a consultant. And without being cynical, consultants deliver what their clients want them to deliver. That's how they get paid. If he turned up a dossier saying Donald Trump is squeaky clean, he wouldn't have got paid. We don't know that, do we? Well... No, in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. That's the first thing I'd refute. I, I mean, he runs a, he runs a, a business espionage consultancy, um, and he will often have disappointed clients and still got paid. But every, everything else stands. I'm not, I'm not picking any holes in anything else you've said. But, but I, I got a couple of mates that work in that world, and quite often when you're doing commercial espionage, they're trying to find some leverage or they're trying to find a secret, especially in Russia, yeah. and and you still get paid if it doesn't work out. Fair enough, then. But this, but. Well, on from that, though, there's been subsequent reports that, that the dossier may be true because the guy who wrote it, Chris Steele, is highly regarded in those circles, which may well be true. Yes. But to the likes of you and I, James, I mean, my opinion of those intelligence services um, is significantly different since 2003 because it was intelligence services who are the prompting of their political masters gave us cause to uh, invade Iraq and subsequent problems arising from that. Yes. So the issue of, as to how somebody is well regarded in those circles actually has less significance for me now again, than I, it I, used I, to. I, 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 <sighs> Again, I'm, I'm, I'm not. I've heard this a lot that because the uh, weapons of mass destruction were not discovered, the intelligence services are somehow compromised eternally. It, it, it doesn't really wash. For me, it doesn't uh, because it would be like using one example of them dropping the ball or possibly even deliberately misleading politicians, which I think is the other way around. I think politicians were putting too much pressure on them to tell them what they wanted to hear. You've got decades of success and decades of. Uh, good behaviour. I don't know why that all gets wiped out forever by the weapons of mass destruction bombshell. No, you're right. I, I wouldn't suggest it, it wipes out forever, but I think it's almost like when the press regulates itself. That encourages cynicism because the press yeah. will tend to be look beneficially upon itself. And I would suggest that people who work in intelligence will tend to look favourably upon their colleagues and so on and so forth. So he may well be really good at his job. Yeah. But that doesn't mean to say that A, uh, his report is correct, and B, that his his motives were absolutely with integrity. So you could report the... Because the part of the defence is... I'm just going to remind people of the phone number because you're doing a better job yeah. than me of making this interesting. 0345 6060 if you want to join on. Should BuzzFeed have, built, have published this dossier? And, and just to yeah. paraphrase myself, should the, should the Rebel Alliance now be building its own Death Star of unproven news to fight against the one that's propelled Donald Trump into the, into the White House? I... You could report the existence of the dossier, which is a defence the editor has put forward. It was out there, everyone was talking about it. Um, you could do that, could you, in your world? You could say you could tell your readers, well, this dossier exists, it's full of unproven allegations against Donald Trump, but we're certainly not going to go into what those allegations are. Okay. I think there's a... Uh, can I give you uh, a sort of big, brief background here? Yeah. I'm 53. So 40 years ago, I used to... I, I began to read the press regularly. And yes. My, the paper of choice was The Guardian, because my dad was a Guardian reader. So I read The Guardian during the week, and he used to get the Sunday Express at the weekend. Oh, yeah. For a change. Now, at the age of 13, I could see that one paper, The Guardian, <laughs> by and large, was pretty logical, reasoned, and well written. And one paper was full of sort of prejudice, <laughs> loathing, discrimination. So I could trust. Plus, ça change. The Guardian. Plus, ça change. <laughs> yeah. And, I, and so I used to get my news from the BBC and The Guardian, and I could trust it. Yes. Okay. Now, 40 years later, yes, I'm older and I'm more cynical. But circumstances have utterly and completely changed. The quality of writing in what you and I would call the quality press, I would suggest, has significantly deteriorated. Yeah, you're right. Not because there's no quality journalists out there, but because it's all about getting hits and clicks. Yeah. So it's not about writing a great article. It's about getting somebody provoked enough to want to sort of click on it and read it or, or make a comment. That's what it's about. Yes. And so what you've got here with your bright bar and BuzzFeed and so on and so forth is forget the quality. No, you can't put them in the same category. 
No, no, but I, 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 won't, I won't try to, other than... Other than they're driven by the desire for clicks and it trumps everything else. That's right. Well, I know, but I've done a no BuzzFeed. And, and then, I mean, obviously, that's the metric by which they, they, they stand or fall. But I'm judged by clicks and listeners. And I would never tell you a barefaced lie just to get, just to get bums no. on seats. So there will always be exceptions. Yeah, and that's why I listen to you, because you wouldn't do that. The trick here for what you and I might call the mainstream of quality media is what you do. Yeah. Because that story got out, even if BuzzFeed hadn't have done it, if somebody wanted that story to have got out, it would have got out, yes. wouldn't it? It would have got out, somebody, somewhere would have published it. So is it best to have it published on a relatively... Respectable. Like, respectable uh, publication or somewhere else? Who knows? But my view is that quality press were right not to reprint it. I think they were right to comment upon the fact that it got out there. Yeah. But I think they were right to say, do you know what? Because we can't judge this, because we cannot verify it, that's where we stand. And if, you know, your mainstream media outlets all took that view, at least the likes of you and I would have at least some inkling of the veracity of a particular story. And if I saw something on Facebook published, I would go, do you know what, because the BBC or the Guardian or the Times haven't done that story, I'm not going to do it. I'm not yeah, to but, but then, then, and this is where the conversation will go in the second half. We've taken us right up to half past Chris in Northwich. They're proving that if the quality of the caller is good enough, we have a lovely freedom at LBC to give them as much time as they want. Or maybe not quite as much time as you want, Chris, but a lot more time than, than, than is ordinarily the case. It means I have to apologise to Charlie and Joseph and Aaron and Adam and Chris. I promise you, that, and David, rather, and promise you that we'll, we'll crack on with your calls immediately after the news. Everything Chris said, I agree with, I think. Um, but... Then you get to the end, and people like him and me, somewhat naively, talk of reputable or respectable media, and we're living in a world where, where significant swathes, 50%, 52% of populations, and that's not a Brexit reference, I'm thinking of America, uh, I actually would argue that even the BBC is biased and on, on some sort of uh, mission to, I don't know, undermine the white race. I, I can never keep up with what it's been accused of being biased about today and and if you've got all of these people swallowing really weird lies what do the good guys do oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three chris rightly argues they have to stay strong stick to the principles but those principles aren't working I mean, it's still a little bit early to wake up and smell the coffee. I think everybody in the so-called mainstream or liberal or normal or reputable or established media has to recognise that the very nature of objectivity has been changed by internet reporting, um, exaggeration, embellishment and outright lies. But we're, we're old. We're like everybody else. We're small-c conservative. It takes a while to move with the times. How do you fight lies being peddled as news? You probably don't fight it by peddling your own unproven allegations as news, which is what BuzzFeed stands accused of doing with regard to that 35-page dossier about Donald Trump. We do it in this country as well. You know, the story about David Cameron's uh, adventures with a pig's head, absolutely unsourced. Nothing, nothing on the record about that uh, in either the book or in the subsequent newspaper coverage. But some newspaper editors decided it was too juicy an allegation not to put out there. Put it out there as an allegation. <sighs> Yeah, that's, I think it was the Mail on Sunday that did that. It was a paper I really like. Strange times, isn't it? But I think BuzzFeed almost certainly dropped a clang here for the reasons that Chris explained. But some of you on Twitter are very persuasive in the other direction. The story was out there. It was being discussed. It was in the mainstream. Um, and BuzzFeed just provided the detail and stressed throughout that it was only allegation, not like what Breitbart and Infowars do, which is print things that aren't true and swear blind they are. Errol's in Woolwich. Errol, what made you pick up the phone? Oh, hi, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just a little bit confused by it, but for me, the, the story seems to be that the reason why Trump is such a, you know, throwing his toys out of the pram, so to speak, is because CNN reported uh, what BuzzFeed has said as though it was facts. They no. put a taint onto it to say oh, as yeah. if it was facts. Trump might be saying that, but they didn't. They, they, they categorically didn't. Yeah, well, that's what they're saying, but he was saying that why did you run this story? You're supposed to be a reputable, you know, the royal circle of news media. But he, and this is, this is the heart... This fringe organisation. This is the heart of the issue uh, for me. Donald, Tr Donald Trump phoned up Alex Jones at Infowars, the guy who thinks that 
fruit juice cartons have had their chemical composition changed to make the youth of America gay to say thank you for all your help and support. So that's what makes it so interesting for me. The fact that he can shout fake news at CNN for correctly reporting that a website had published a 35-page dossier alleging that Russians had tried to blackmail Donald Trump in a variety of ways. And, and mm. somehow... Well, did, go on. Well, why did, CNN, why, well, why did CNN report that, well, given that they, you knew he wasn't being substantiated? I'm, I'm, not a big, I'm no fan of Donald Trump. Trust me, I don't like the man. I detest the man. But I, do, I don't like also when main media report falseness and, and I do but they didn't, they haven't they, 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 they haven't, they haven't it's, it's a difference between but, an but, why un did, but why did, if they knew that BuzzFeed had this caveat that says it's unsubstantiated why did they bother to re further report it it doesn't make sense. If you've got something there which says this has been unsubstantiated. No, I think in, right. even in, no, even in serious it. journalism, if so, someone breaks the, the, the seal, as it were, someone leaves the pack, you report the leaving of the pack. So previously you'd report the existence of a document, but if another media organisation had published the document, you have no choice but to refer to it. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, to me, I can understand his, his scepticism, as I say, because of his running before, well, during the presidential election, towards the mainstream media. I do have a question around CNN not actually verifying this, you know. In but they did. They, they, they out, reported. Especially, especially when Errol, it comes mate, to I'm trying to help you out president. here. Seriously. Uh, CNN reported that BuzzFeed had published a dossier of unproven allegations. There's nothing wrong with what CNN did. Donald Trump is desperately, desperately trying to distract attention away from his failure to publish his tax returns, from the, from the tensions with Russia, from the very real possibility that very senior members of his administration are in the Kremlin's pocket, from the suspicion that he they is. They made links with one of, their sta one of his staff, Michael, a guy called Michael Crown, I think I forget his surname. They got that wrong in the dossier, link. but have a look at Paul Manafort's link to Russia if you want to see stuff that you really should be worried about. So uh, the question is, should should BuzzFeed have published this? And your answer is clearly no, they shouldn't. I, I, I don't know. It's not so much BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed can publish whatever they want. I don't think that CNN should have picked it up. That's my. But everybody question. picked but it you, up, mate. You, you, every, every single news yeah. organization in the world picked it up, not just CNN. Trump's picking on yeah. CNN because A, they've got an Achilles heel of perceived support for Hillary Clinton, and B, his chomping supporters start screaming the usual insults like snowflake and other words that I'm not prepared to use on a radio station that children yeah. listen to. And, and that's the only reason he picked on CNN. Every other journalist in that room had yeah. reported the same. BuzzFeed story. Well, yeah, I probably I, I would agree with you, but I, I, I think, like your other caller said before, news media days these days have, have gone downhill, and they need to be more. Some haven't. Bit, it's it's and, so and, weird, and, you know. Or approved. I, I, know. I, I know the clickbait argument is very, very powerful. There's a very strong piece about it in the Lady Magazine this week, but the um, uh, 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 the, the, the organisations that bend over backwards to do things properly are the ones that get the most abuse from the kind of peddlers of the weird news. BBC is setting up a special unit to look at uh, precisely these sort of fake news stories and fake news sites because no one else can. No one else can. On only something that's funded by license can do that proper journalism now. Everything else is commercialised. It's why you get people who are essentially just hate preachers, handed radio shows and newspaper columns, because it clicks. There's a lot of hate out there. It needs feeding every day. And the first thing you do, if you're trying to pretend that hate preaching is journalism, the first thing you do is start trying to dismantle proper journalism. And the result of the American presidential election shows that it's working. So what does proper journalism do to fight back? Answer, in the case of this BuzzFeed publication, stoop to their level. It can't be the right answer. But if that's not the right answer, what the hell is? Adam is in Cardiff. Adam, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello, uh, Adam. First of all, just want to say that I love the show. You're very kind. Uh, Second of all, I, I studied journalism for my undergraduate degree, uh, so this topic is, is of particular importance to me. And you said you wanted to have a philosophical discussion is what, what yes. made me want to ring it. <laughs> um, I think your allusion to Breitbart and Donald Trump was quite poignant. And in particular, I think you could argue that it is only right to fight fire with fire yeah. and say, well, you guys don't maintain the highest standards of journalism in terms of fact checking and being morally, ethically responsible. Yeah. So now we're going to do the same thing. Yeah. And, and evidently it works because Breitbart is essentially the mouthpiece of Donald Trump and he's soon to be the president of the United States. Yeah. Um, but doing this, I think, does have its own problems. And you have to consider the state of journalism as a whole. 
So you've got the phone hacking scandal that led to the closure of News of the World uh, a while ago. Yes. And I think that's indicative of the decline in good journalistic principles generally. I, 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 it's a red herring that in the context of this conversation, except perhaps in the broader notion of trusting journalists, because the phone hacking story didn't involve lies. It involved ethical uh, malpractice, but no lies in terms yeah. of what was printed. They shouldn't have been printing the stuff that they got from the phone hacking, but it's not about deliberately printing, knowingly printing lies and telling your readers they're true. Very true. Um, I, I think when stuff like this happens, uh, if everyone says, I want the latest scoop or I want to drive more traffic to my website, because I think ultimately you have to consider that it is a business and commercial game. And I think that is quite cynical. Um, but I think it's, a, it's an important factor to consider. Uh, you do run the risk of lower standards and poorer journalism that, that doesn't actually hold power to account, which is ultimately the purpose of journalism. But, but then you sit on, an, an, on a diminishing island of tininess. Right, with, with with the truth and respectability and ethical um, uh, correctness keeping you warm at night, as the rest of the world gets swamped by this avalanche of fake news. But what do you do, James? I don't know, Adam. You're the one with the degree. <laughs> <laughs> but you're the journalist. I'm, I just Allegedly. Reckon. Are you at Cardiff Journalism School? Uh, yes, I am. Very good school indeed. Very good school indeed. But uh, but I don't know what you do. What do, what would your lecturers say? What do you do? I mean, because now Donald Trump has done this thing that I told you he'd do. Is is the whole thing of this sort of weird alt right movement? Then their tactic when criticised is to say, "I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? I know you are." So you you point out that they're sort of you know backwards bigots. They say, "Oh, you're the biggest bigot of all." You point out that they're racist. Oh, you hate your own race. You point out that this is fake news, and they say, "Oh, well, that's fake news over there. The BBC is fake news." This time it was fake news. It was unproven allegations. So Donald Trump actually kind of gets away with it this time. Yeah. So what do you I, do? I, how do you how do I, you fight fake news? Personally, I think that there is no smoke without fire. Um, and I do think that... But that's not no, true, because they claimed that Hillary Clinton's key aide was involved in the abduction of Madeleine McCann. I'm going to go on the record here and say that's smoke, but there was no fire. I guess you've just proven me wrong, James. Dang. In the case of the Trump dossier, there's almost certainly something in it that's true, but the job of a journalist is to establish what is and what isn't, as, as, you, as you will know better than I do. I couldn't get into journalism school, Adam, actually. I don't know whether you want to take that as an encouragement for your studies or, <laughs> or the opposite. Um, 11.43 is the time. My wife got a scholarship, though, so it's a good job we found each other when we did. Joseph is in Labrook Grove. Joseph, what do you think? Uh, hi, James. Hi, uh, I've never called in before, so... Um, You're very welcome. This is in Thank you. Uh, I'm also Incorrigible FCA on Twitter, by the way, <laughs> just in case... Ah, splendid! Welcome! OK, well, you are, as you know, one of my favourite tweeters. So, well, why... You, you, I, I know from your tweets that you are, um... You're younger than I thought you were, Joseph, by your voice, but you, you, you're in favour of what BuzzFeed did. Tell us why. Indeed. Well, you've already read out my tweet, James. Yes. <laughs> you've already told everyone. But, um... Well, first of all, it was news. It was definitively news, and journalists are supposed to report news. And the reason why it was news is because it was being discussed in the Senate already. It was uh, included in a letter from Harry Reid, the leader of the Democrats during the election. You'll remember he... Yes, but you uh, can report that it exists. You can report that it's been discussed in the Senate, but you don't necessarily, under that analysis, have to report what's in it. True. But when... Uh, James Comey released the news that he was investi reinvestigating the emails of Hillary Clinton. Yes. He was also, at the same time, looking at this Russia. He was, uh, yes, that's history. true. That's a matter of record. And absolutely. And because he only reported, he only publicised one half of his investigations, he put his finger on the scales of the election, in my humble opinion. Yes. And, and we know that because the um, Hillary's poll rating went from almost double digits to, to two yeah. or three yeah. percent by the time, yeah, by the time of the actual election. So if he'd added, oh, and by the way, we're also investigating on exactly the same level of urgency, the possibility that Donald Trump is, is being blackmailed by Russians who've got videos of him watching prostitutes urinate on each other. That might have affected the poll ratings as well. Well, I think so. Yeah, you? I do too. But I still don't see this leading inexorably to the conclusion that they should have, that BuzzFeed should have published the whole document because they haven't, I mean, James Comey could have said we're investigating allegations. There is a dossier that has been assembled. Da, 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 da. But we don't need all 35 pages of it. Um, well, 
Yes, I mean, the BuzzFeed's defense is that you know, the American public should be allowed to make up their own minds, right? Um, and isn't there a journalistic principle in there? I mean, I don't know. I don't know that there is. I, you know that I, I sort of a lot of your thoughts chime with mine on a lot of issues, but not on all of them, which is why I enjoy your tweets so much. I just. I, I don't know. It, it seems to me like you're adopting the tactics of, 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 the, of the enemy, and the tactics are bogus. You don't publish unsubstantiated rumour. Well, one of the things that journalists often say, um, particularly investigative journalists often say, is that it's their duty to publish stuff that politicians want to keep secret. And I think this is one of those classic cases of that maybe maybe and and, and then of course i i, I still I, i'm not going to agree with you but of course uh, you have raised the possibility that i will have to agree with you further down the line when it turns out that all the stuff in the report was true but buzzfeed don't know whether it's true or not and that for me is the problem thank you very much indeed joseph Eleven forty-seven is the time tim adams who wrote a brilliant piece in last week's observer i don't know if you read it in the new review section has just been in touch to point out that the um reason cnn is at the front of the queue for donald trump is that they were the first to report the existence of the dossier. So they reported the existence of the dossier. That's not fake news. Donald Trump tried to say it was. That prompted BuzzFeed to publish the dossier, which is susceptible to the accusation of fake news. Is Joseph still there? How was your debut, Joseph? How did it work for you? Um, uh, are we still being broadcast? Yeah, like loud and clear, mate. Of course we are. <laughs> right. uh, well, you know, it was a bit scary, but it was okay. Good. It was okay. It's nice to have, call again. It's nice to have you going by media, but keep tweeting as well, won't you? I'm going to call you Joseph from. I'm going to call you Joseph from now on, though, because your Twitter handle is too much of a mouthful. That's fair enough. Carry on. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. And he's got some excellent YouTube channels as well that you might want to check out under his handle, Incorrigible FCA. Eleven forty-eight is the time. And let me go home without telling you what I think of the decision yesterday to record that speech of Amber Rudd's that we. Um, were responsible for removing from the government's policy plans with regard to having to name and shame companies that employ foreign workers. The idea that it's some sort of race hate or hate incident. Actually, I'll just tell you now, I don't really buy into this sort of... Um, I'm not very good at it. That's why I'm teasing you with things coming up later in the programme. It's a bit silly, isn't it, to record it as a hate incident? I, mean, I don't know about you. I don't want to live in a country where... Our government is enacting policies that have been lifted wholesale from Mein Kampf, and, and, and she was, in the way the Times reported it, went into even more detail than what she actually said on the podium. And when I read out that little excerpt from Hitler's um, work, it was astonishing. Well, you can tell, because I think it went nearly five million on the old interweb. Um, how many people were just staggered by the, by the echoes and the resonances. But it, it, I mean, you don't buy in as a result of finding it repellent that a Home Secretary would punt a policy straight out of Mein Kampf to the idea that it's some sort of hate incident. I don't think it was. I think it's daft that the police even got involved in something like this. I really do. But, and I'll just mention this, because yeah, I think someone has to, I think I'd rather live in a country that tries a little bit too hard to combat hate than in a country that doesn't try hard enough. Maybe that is the mark of a, uh, of a snowflake. Like, so, yeah, look, it's, it's, it's silly that Amber Rudd has, has gone down on some record somewhere as a propagator of a hate incident. But I, 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 I kind of rather live where we try a little bit too hard to keep hate at bay than in a country where we don't try hard enough. But that's probably political correctness, is it? That, thinking that it's, it's, it's more important to fight hate than it is to accommodate it. I, I, I genuinely don't know, but that, there you go. So as the, as the man who some media outlets yesterday um, were crediting as being responsible for Amber Rudd being um, handed this, this judgment, handed this description, I, I, I would say I find the description, the, the record as a hate incident, a little bit daft. I don't know that the police had any choice, and I think just to make things even more Kafkaesque, I think they were left with no choice but to do this under the terms of hate incident that are defined by the actual Home Office. So she's been hoist very much by her own petard, but I don't think we should chuck the petard away as a result of this, this one here being a little bit daft. 11.55 is the time. Happy to clarify that. And actually, while we're at it, let's clarify something else as well. Because the, the conversation about fake news, a couple of people are suggesting that because I did a lot of work last year with Exero, the, the news website that covered the VIP child abuse stuff and which was responsible for putting into the mainstream the testimony of, a, of a, an accuser called Nick, whose testimony has subsequently been judged by most people involved in this issue to have been false, many people calling for him to be prosecuted. If you report an allegation as an allegation, you're not doing fake news. If I say to you now that there are currently 
Um, uh, yeah, actually, that case is still live, isn't it? But but if I mean, who's we're we're seeing the football VIP child abuse story unfolding? If I report that to you, and six months down the line, one of the lads claiming that he was abused by his football coach turns out not to have been telling the truth, and or turns out to be unable to prove it, it doesn't mean that we reported fake news six months ago. It means we accurately reported what somebody was claiming. And you also report, if you do your job properly, what the people being accused claim. If you don't report it properly, you end up with situations like Greville Janner, men like Greville Janner abusing children for years and, and going to his grave unpunished. So by all means, I mean, take a pop at me whenever you want, but don't take a pop at fundamental truths. To report an allegation is not to claim that the allegation is true. I, again, yesterday I said this to you, I'm going to say it to you again today, I can't believe I need to explain stuff like this. But I think that is the world that fake news has created. It's a world where journalists like me have to explain to people why reporting an allegation brought against a VIP that subsequently turns out to be either unfounded or unprovable is not the same as reporting an allegation that um, you've just invented involving Hillary Clinton's chief of staff being involved in the abduction of Madeleine McCann. To, to even see any equivalence between those two is a little bit beyond my ken, but people are seeing an equivalence, so my job as a journalist is to explain what the difference is. Some, some people don't want to see the difference. I can't help them. I, I mean, keep, keep, keep trolling away, that's great. But people who can see the difference, or, or at least people who are open-minded enough to appreciate that there is a difference, I feel that you've been neglected by what has become known as mainstream media. Because you're getting bombarded with all the, all the hogwash and nonsense from one side, and the other side aren't really taking enough time to explain to you why it's all hogwash and nonsense. Partly because they don't really feel that their, their day on the football pitch should be defined by what the opposition is doing. But we are where we are. Charlie's in Hyde. Last word on this. Charlie, what would you like to say? Um, yeah, I, my, my concern with, uh, with the, the Bosley producing this uh, document is it gives Trump ammunition to reject the next thing that comes along that might be true, yeah. that might have more veracity. Yeah. I mean, that's why, because um, you... you even with the caveat that this is a publication of allegation, it's a publication of a accusation, yeah. it's not a publication of claim. Oh, no, no, I absolutely understand that, but it's still... It, there's that risk there. The more... The weaker the stuff you throw at him, the easier it becomes for him to say, well, this is... To just create this false equivalency, which we're really, really, he's really, really good at. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, him and, and most of his acolytes are, are writing the rules, actually, of false equivalency in a way that, that I think began with climate change, didn't it? Or something uh, oh, yeah, yeah. of that ilk. And now, as, as, I mean, it's, the cart is before the horse. And that's what they do. I mean, it is, I know you are, but what am I? On a presidential scale. So I became president as a result in part of websites publishing unadulterated nonsense are often with a racist subtext and clearly designed to make white people feel that somehow they were going to be back in charge and women and people of colour were going to be back in second place I'm going to phone him up and thank him but when BuzzFeed do something one out of ten on that scale of dishonesty he can actually say fake news he can actually call it fake news ah, Charlie's nailed it it's coming up to 12 noon